So hey everyone, it's Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place. I am here in New York on the USS New York and I am here for uh, the 2015 Veterans Week and I'm here with Cindy Tabo. How are you doing? I am doing great and it is so fantastic to be here in New York on USS New York. Yes. We have 400, about 400 sailors and 120 Marines. We came in yesterday gorgeous weather, incredible New York welcome, and with a special connection between this ship and this city, uh, we are just can't, the crew had a wonderful time out and about last night yes. and can't wait for all the events that we have coming up this week. Yes, it is so exciting and it's a little cold, a little, little cold, but that's okay. You I'm know. from this neck of the woods originally, so, uh, so I'm good. I love it. Yeah. And I haven't heard too many complaints from anybody about the weather. Okay. Being in New York is so special for everybody. And we have a number of sailors who are from the New York City area. But more importantly, we have a lot of sailors and Marines who have never been here before. And the look of the excitement in their, in their eyes is fantastic. Yes. And women veterans, how have they changed over the years? And like, what have you noticed the most? Well, one of the big changes is how many women we have serving in the services right now. Um, when I came in in the operational forces, it was about 1%. Yeah. And now we have about 20. Wow. And the opportunities that have opened up are just orders of magnitude. I came in before the combat exclusion law had been repealed, so very limited uh, assignments that women could go to, and virtually everything is open now. And. Uh, Night and day. I don't know how else to say, yeah. to say it. Um, a lot of the ships, some of the ships have about 25% for the, for the Navy, have about 25% women. Most of them run somewhere between 18 to 20%. Yeah. Um, just such strong solidarity and uh, <laughs> incredibly, I mean, just worlds of difference. Yes. That's and awesome then. I, Very cool. I wish I had a better way to articulate it. So what has been like your biggest challenge? Oh, a lot of times my biggest challenge is is trying to figure out which are the incredibly exciting opportunities per, to pursue, really. Um, I came in and I've been rotating back and forth between sea duty and ships uh, my entire career, which is what we do as what we call a surface warfare officer, so specializing in shipboard assignments. And the wide variety of opportunities, I've had to do different things uh, while ashore, from uh, teaching policy, international security, been stationed overseas in uh, Singapore and Italy working both Southeast Asia uh, operationally and uh, the Medi Mediterranean, West and Central Africa and the opportunities that are afforded to our young men and women are, uh, are fantastic. You know, I'm going to sound a little trite here but you know, I think there's a mindset that oh, you know, the military a bunch of, bunch of killers but really it's uh, peace through strength and presence yeah. and uh, having a strong capable offense is the best defense yeah. what a lot of us you know really the mindset that we want to and then you went to college and became like <laughs> I don't know. So the temple. Uh, it was a culture there. But yeah, we're okay, okay. Just like that. Of course, after we uh, assemble it, we want to test it. So we'll do something called a weapons check. So direct back. Put on safe. So the fire shouldn't fire. We're on fire. Pretty awesome to know. Take the ball back. Yeah, I mean, it's good. That's how you go. This is a standard issue M9 Beretta. Shoots 9mm rounds. Out of effective range at about 50 meters. Muzzle velocity is about 365 meters a second. Okay. Um, pretty simple weapon, honestly. It breaks down into like maybe four main groups. You have your, uh, this is your low receiver, high there. And this is your slide. From this, you get your guide rod assembly, which essentially guides the barrel. Guide your barrel along its operations. Okay. It's pretty much it, honestly. Um, very simple weapon. About eight inches in length from the tip of the barrel to the back of the weapon. As far as weight goes, right now it's barely under two pounds, so not much at all. As far as operation goes, it's a uh, double action for the first shot. 
So pull the hammer all the way back to the rear. After that first shot, racks it back and becomes a single action trigger. So you just press the trigger. 32 revolving grenade launcher. Basically what it is, is in here, you've got six rounds. Uh, 40 mic mic, which is uh, 40 millimeter grenades. So you'll put a round in each here. And then freaking, what you have to do is you'll rotate this so it'll revolve. Put that here. Every time you pull the trigger, it'll automatically revolve around to load the next round. So, and then the side through, the side up here, which is adjustable depending on range that you're trying to get into. So, the farther out you're trying to go, the higher up you're going to aim because it'll arc out. And then after 15 rotations, the uh, 40 mic mic grenade that's in here will activate because it takes 15 rotations to activate to arm the grenade. After that, it'll impact on whatever you're shooting at and uh, it'll explode depending on which round you're using. This can be used for smoke grenades, high explosives, um, armor armor penetrating rounds, whatever you need. It's, it's pretty versatile. Hey everyone, it's Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place. We are here in New York City on the USS New York and it's the 2015 Veterans Week and I am here with the Commissioner of Veteran Affairs, Dr. Lori Sutton. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Pavlina. Thanks for being here. This is a great day and a great week in New York City. Yes, thank you for being with me and everything. This is very exciting. So, um, Veteran Affairs are, you know, really important, especially like the mental, um, you know, stability of veterans. So how are women veterans different from men veterans? Well, I'll tell you, um, at the mayor's, first of all, at the mayor's office of Veterans Affairs, every day is Veterans Day, and so we are so thrilled uh, here at Veterans Week. And, and here in New York City, we have um, over 230,000 veterans of all eras, all components, all branches of service. And of course, our women veterans, and I am one, we, we know that this over these next few months, we are starting a concerted outreach campaign so that we can engage our women veterans, engage all of our veterans, but in particular, sometimes there are issues that for women veterans make it a little more difficult. You know, the the family engagements tend to be more pressing, of course, for women and work relationships. Uh, it can be hard to get childcare and to get folks out in the evenings and get the hours right. But even beyond that, you know, sometimes it's hard for us as women veterans because our society doesn't yet quite know what women in uniform are doing on their behalf. And so it's, um, it's an education. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity to tell the stories of women, of men, of families who serve, because you know families serve too. So we're very excited here in New York City to have just a, a wonderful, uh, veterans community and led of course by Mayor de Blasio our office is so privileged to be able to improve the lives of our veterans in New York City. Yeah and like you were saying there were there are over like 200,000 veterans you know just in New York so how many of those are women and um, yeah. It's about 10% okay. in New York and so you know we uh, we work very closely with all of the veteran service organizations and of course uh, you know just across the way here is the Intrepid Museum which is a wonderful asset and you know having the USS New York here was never forget I mean it's such a special bond really a special bond that ties us together here in New York not only within our our military community but also reaching out to our first responders our fire firefighters, our police officers, our medics, as well as just this incredibly supportive community that loves its soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardsmen right here in New York City. Yes, definitely. So, and kind of like what you were saying before, um, people don't really think, you know, they think of Veterans you know, Day or whatever, they kind of just think of men. So, um, with women, uh, how can we get them to think more of like, you know, it's it's both of us, you know what I mean? Well, I think a good start is, first of all, the two senior leaders that you're talking to this morning happen to be women. You know, Admiral Thibault and her background and just incredibly distinguished service, and here she is uh, really at the peak of her career as a, as a leader who happens to be a woman. You know, I was so privileged to be able to spend almost 30 years in uniform in the Army. The Army put me through medical school. I was privileged to serve as a psychiatrist. And, you know, when I think about all of the changes since 1981 when I 
first came in, when you would look around and there weren't very many women around. And now it's just so exciting. So I think the first step is to do exactly what we're doing today. Talk to us so that our stories get out there and you understand that uh, it's, it's women and men who are serving and we are part of one united team, which makes it very, very exciting, especially in a place like New York City.